Hello and welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about two big paradigms in research. Quantitative research and qualitative research. These two in fact are wide categories based on approaches to a research. Let us discuss them one by one. Quantitative research. It is also called as a logical positivism. Logical positivism is set of beliefs which uses experiment and quantitative research methods based on assumptions of natural sciences. These assumptions of natural sciences are universally accepted and applied to social sciences as well. Quantitative research assumes that anything that exists can be quantified and measured in numbers. This can be well understood with the help of an example. A teacher wants to know the cognitive levels of his student. Is it possible to quantify cognitive levels? Yes, it is. A teacher gives tests to his students and assigns the scores according to their performance. The scores so received by a student reflect the cognitive levels of a student. Similarly, in educational researches also, perception, attitude, personality, skills and other traits can be quantified by providing them a number. This can be well done through observation, analysis, description or explanation of any variable. Now let's discuss about characteristics of quantitative researches. It uses deductive approach, sometimes called as top-down approach or approach from unknown to known or specific to general. It is based on logical positivism paradigm which utilizes experimental methods and quantitative measures to test a specific hypothetical generalization with narrow angle lens. It uses scientific method with hard science trappings or the assumptions of scientific studies. Behavior of subjects under study is assumed to be regular and predictable. Most of the common research objectives in quantitative approach aim at description, explanation and prediction of social phenomena. It attempts to study behavior under controlled situations. Close-ended structure questionnaires, tests, attitude scales, rating scales etc. are well used to collect quantitative data based on precise measurements. Now let's study about some major types of quantitative researches. The first one is descriptive research. It deals with the question what is. It tries to answer the question about the current status of a phenomena under study. It usually involves studying the preferences, concerns, interests, attitude, perceptions of a society or a group of people at a certain time period. Suppose for this session you want to know the perception of peer interns towards internship. This will be a kind of descriptive research. The second type of quantitative research is casual comparative research. It deals with the question what was. It tries to seek or discover cause and effect relationship between two or more different programs groups or variables. It is also called as ex post facto research because in this type of research generally the researcher has no control over casual factors or independent variables as it studies the effects after the occurrence of an event or fact. For example, we want to study the effect of natural disaster on education. Such kind of study will be ex post facto or casual comparative study because in this study the researcher generally will have no control over the casual factors. Instead he will rely upon the consequences or results that have been obtained after the disaster. So such type of studies are ex post facto or casual comparative research study. The third type of quantitative research is experimental research. It deals with the question what will be. It also looks for the cause and effect relationship between two or more variables. 
but in this type of research the researcher has control over independent variables or casual factors so a researcher can manipulate or control the situation and then look for the results or consequences for example the researches conducted in lab are all experimental designs in educational research when we are looking for effectiveness of a teaching module we can use experimental research using control group and experimental group now let us discuss about its advantages and limitations because we receive everything in numbers the results are statistically reliable it is easy to express in terms of what when who and where the results can be generalized now let us discuss its limitations also the data are closed ended and hence do not provide depth and detail the participants are not allowed to express in terms of why when how where they are limited to the asked information advanced formulation of a specific hypothesis is an important requirement which is doubtable the issues are only measured if they are known prior to the beginning of the study especially in the survey research quantitative research is neither appropriate nor cost effective for studying why people act or think as they do finally in conclusion it can be said that quantitative approach uses numbers to quantify things or traits but dealing with numbers can be dangerous therefore looking at the situation and conditions the researchers are always advised to use appropriate research design in our coming video we will be discussing about qualitative research thank you so much for watching this video